the issues that have been plaguing our community for decades. We will stand for social injustices. We will fight to bridge the education gap. We will help to find the resources to have affordable housing in Evanston and everywhere. We will stand up for the rights of our children in school and everywhere they go. We will be advocates for action. I, I just want to say that I have been uh, stretched and refreshed myself having had an opportunity to be a part of uh, this great work. And um, it is truly humbling to stand here uh, to have been a part of what I believe uh, will accomplish great exploits over the years to come. Uh, my attachment to this uh, really briefly came through a discussion. Uh, Kim approached me. At our church, we've been focusing on what we call people who, who have gifts, the gift of helps. And that is non-leader, non-titled people who create tremendous impact. And uh, being a leader, we are often focused on and celebrated. Uh, but I know as a leader, things do not get done without the people who so graciously and trustingly follow me. And as I cast vision, it doesn't happen unless the people who follow carry it. Uh, and so the premise was, how about we share this with the community that you don't have to be the mayor or the alderman or the school superintendent to have a voice and to create tremendous and lasting impact in your community. What would happen if we shared this message with people that you with your quote regular self have a voice and that you could do something that could really change the trajectory of your family and the many families in our community. And that was our approach. And over the course of four months we took a step-by-step -step approach through the teaching to first determine, uh, which is probably my favorite of the four, because in determining who you are, you also have to be okay with who you are not. And we just spent time embracing who we are, what we do well, and what we suck at. <laughs> and we just decided that the things that I don't do well, I will trust my neighbor who does do it well. And in that instance, they'll lead. If we put all those pieces together, uh, we can make a whole. Uh, and so we determine, and after we determine who we are and who we're not, we develop it. And then after it's developed, then we deploy. Too many of us deploy before we've been developed. Uh, and then deepen was the last week, committing to lifelong learning, uh, which we all must do. And I am so excited about the Advocates for Action. And in closing, I want to say what I said to you all at the beginning of our third class. If that is the name that you have chosen, live up to your name. I believe that the responsibilities are oftentimes deeply connected to the etymology of the words that we pick. If you want to be an advocate, understand what an advocate is, what it does, where the word was derived from, and then be that. Don't just have it in name alone. Be advocates for action and help us make Edison the greatest city in the world today. Thank you all. organizations coming together and we recognize that the reality is it has to be about the community and it has to be driven by the community so really pulling this group together we hope they're really going to be key leaders in helping drive the work of cradle to career so that we are making sure that the work that we're doing is consistent with the needs of the community and really is responsive to the issues that the community faces. Um, I love this community. I just came back here um, after 10 years on the west side of Chicago working at Orr, so it's a great opportunity to come back and give into the community that I was born and raised. So I thought, 
what better way to do community engagement than to bring community voice? So I built this team, some referrals, some people I knew personally, some people I had in my own groups of family focus, um, had a few referrals. Um, and once we built the team, I began to think, you know, they want these, these people to be leaders. They need to be trained. So I had been to the HELPS conference, which is about the regular folks being very important in making the wheels of justice turn. So Pastor Dillard um, agreed very graciously to come and do leadership training, which had been uh, February to May, we had been trained. Um, and it just really fell together organically, really authentic if people are here tonight. Um, these people are from the heart, they're from the community, they want better for their community, and they're ready to work. So, I mean, it really just came about naturally, which is always best. So what do you think they will do? Like, will they go to city council meetings to represent? Will, you know, what? They will. They will go to um, city council meetings. They will try to integrate themselves in those 40 partner, partner organizations that created two careers with. They will be that community voice. They will be at black club parties and black club meetings and just wherever the community's at and then learning about what's needed. So sort of ear, ear to the ground. They're the ear to the ground. They're the rubber to the road. Well, I've always been a community activist and I think Advocate for Action is the right vehicle in this community to let people know that they do have a voice, they do count, they do matter. And that, yes, we do have your back. We do understand. And we will speak up and stand with you, if not stand for you. We may not have the answers to everything independently, but I think collectively we have enough resources between us that we can send people to the right uh, officials and departments and things like that to get things to move for them in a positive direction. Hi, I'm Monte Dillard Sr. I serve as a senior pastor of the First Church of God Christian Life Center here in Evanston. And what did you have, what was your role with the Advocates Faction? Uh, I came in uh, to the group who initially did not have a name uh, and uh, has now become Advocates for Action uh, to do the training, essentially helping to develop a community leadership team uh, that would essentially have the premise of determining things that they could speak to, give some advocacy to, uh, more so for recommendation purposes, that could be handled or focused on in our community. Um, so the training I was asked to do over the course of uh, four months, every fourth Saturday with the exception of May. Uh, and um, so I decided to walk through, use some alliteration with what we call the four Ds to determine, develop, deploy, and then deepen. And essentially it was determine who we are, what our gifts were, develop them. Uh, we talked about some ways in which to do that. Uh, and then after they're sufficiently developed, at least on some level, then deploy, put it to use. And then as you deploy, you deepen it. You continue to learn, continue to develop yourself. Uh, it's the premise uh, that we really kind of started with was empowering people who are not necessarily leadership to know that um, their voice matters and to create impact. It's a focus uh, that we have at our church. It's actually a conference we do every year called the HELPS Conference, focusing on the people who help leadership uh, bring tasks to pass. And uh, so it was kind of birthed from that. It means that I am a community voice for dealing with the issues of our community, the issues that plague our community. There's so many things that are going on in the Evanston community, not just the Fifth Ward, but all awesome. over Evanston, that we as Advocates for Action feel like we have to step up and be the voice for our community. Do, can you give me an example? For example, um, we would like to have affordable housing in every ward in Evanston, not just the Fifth Ward. We, don't, we all do not just want to live in the Fifth Ward. We want to know what it feels like to live by the lake. We want to know what it feels, feels like to live on Central Street. We want to have affordable housing where they have good communities and great people where our children can be safe and have fun. And so what, and what it means to me to be an advocate for action is to be transparent and to be open for change. It also means to go out to the community and see what issues are happening and find the resources and bring those in to correct those issues. Um, I love being an advocate for action. We are an awesome group. 
because if Alderman Holmes and Kimberly tell me that something's important to them, it is. We are all one voice. We are all one voice, united in one voice. Meaning I, there's no little I's and big U's. So we will all take on every issue together. All of the advocates for action will take on together. Whatever we need to do, whatever resources we need to get, we will get them together.